In this video, we will investigate the derivative at a point, which we can also interpret as the instantaneous rate of change and the slope of the tangent line. Let's begin with the definition. Given a function f defined at the point x equals a and at nearby points, so in other words, we're looking at the point a and an interval including and surrounding a, the instantaneous rate of change of f with respect to x at x equals a is given by the limit of f evaluated at a plus h minus f evaluated at a divided by h as h goes to zero. As we saw in a previous video, this explains a two-step process. First, we calculate and simplify the average rate of change of f with respect to x on the closed interval from a to a plus h. Now graphically, we can interpret this boxed formula to be the slope of the secant line through the points a, f of a, and a plus h, f evaluated at a plus h. And graphically, we look at a possible graph of y equals f of x. We've got the points a, f of a, and a plus h, f evaluated at a plus h. The red line between them we call the secant line, and the slope of that line is given by f evaluated at a plus h minus f evaluated at a divided by h, which is that average rate of change of the function f with respect to x on that closed interval from a to a plus h. The second part of the definition of instantaneous rate of change of f with respect to x at x equals a is to take the limit as h goes to zero. In other words, we identify what happens to the average rate of change of f with respect to x on that closed interval when h is very close to zero. And provided that limit exists, we get the slope of the tangent line to the function f with respect to x at the point x equals a. And graphically, I could see when that h goes to zero, the horizontal distance between those two points, a f of a and a plus h, f evaluated a plus h goes to zero, and um, we get the resulting blue line and whose slope, provided that limit exists, is the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. Now, the instantaneous rate of change is also the derivative of f with respect to x at x equals a, and we write that as the derivative of f evaluated at a is the limit of f evaluated at a plus h minus f evaluated at a divided by h as h goes to zero. Now the notation that's on the left we can say the derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at a, or I can say it's f prime of a. Some other notation that we sometimes see includes dy dx, and that vertical bar with the subscript of x equals a means we're going to evaluate the derivative at x equals a, or I can write it's df dx, Again, evaluated at x equals a. Now this notation, dy dx, is reasonable since we usually see change in y divided by change in x to be the slope of a secant line. And so if I take the limit as that change in x goes to zero, or delta y delta x as uh, delta x goes to zero, it makes sense that I have a dy dx. It also seems reasonable to say that the tangent line to the function f at x equals a is the line that passes through the point a f of a and has a slope of f prime of a, or the derivative of f at a. Let's consider an example. Suppose we have a cylindrical tank that's filled with water and that tank is drained. For differing or varying volumes of water, the time that's required to drain the water in the tank is recorded in seconds and is given by the function t as a function of volume is equal to the square root of 1.65 times volume minus 8.82 and that square root evaluation is given in seconds. How fast is the tank emptying when volume is equal to 150 milliliters? In other words, find the instantaneous rate of change of time with respect to volume when volume is 150 milliliters. As we noted before, the instantaneous rate of change of time with respect to volume when volume is equal to 150 milliliters is the same thing as the derivative of t with respect to v evaluated at 150, which is the limit of t evaluated at 150 plus h minus t evaluated at 150 all divided by h as h goes to zero. 
So first, we're going to show how we calculate and simplify the average rate of change of time with respect to volume over the closed interval from 150 to 150 plus h, and then we'll take the limit as h goes to 0. So again, we've got the function t as a function of v, which is the square root of 1.65 times v minus 8.82. We're going to calculate the average rate of change. And to do so, I have to replace volume with 150 plus h. Now I also have to replace v with 150. And so I have the limit, as h goes to 0, of the square root of 1.65 times 150 plus h minus 8.82 minus the square root of 1.65 times 150 minus 8.82, all divided by h. At this point, if I were to try to evaluate this limit, I would get 0 divided by 0 which, again, as we've talked about, tells me to do more work. So let's do that work. We have to continue to simplify this before we can take the limit. The first step in simplifying is to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of what we have in the numerator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by, one, the, by the square root of 1.65 times 150 plus h minus 8.82 plus the square root of 1.65 times 150 minus 8.82. Again, that's a form of 1 that involves the conjugate of the original numerator. When I multiply those numerators together, I get a difference of squares. So that eliminates the square roots in the numerator. And I'm just going to go ahead and take that bottom expression and move that to the top of the next slide. Now, I'm going to remove parentheses, and so I've got the limit as h goes to 0 of 1.65 times 150 plus h minus 8.82 minus 1.65 times 150 plus 8.82. And we notice that in the line above, when I distributed that not minus sign through, I get a minus times a minus to give me that plus sign. Now it's very important when you're doing uh, when you're calculating derivatives based on the definition of the derivative, that you very carefully attend to the algebra. You need to carefully use parentheses and proceed one step at a time. So many times students make mistakes in the algebra, not so much the calculus, but it's the algebra. So be very, very meticulous in how you proceed with that. Now as I take a look at this expression, I see a negative 8.82 and a positive 8.82, those add together to give me 0. Now I can use the distributive property of 1.65 times the 150 plus h, and I get 1.65 times 150 plus 1.65 h minus 1.65 times 150 all over that denominator, and again I see I get two terms that add to 0. So that in the numerator I'm left with 1.65 times h and in the denominator I have h times the quantity the square root of 1.65 times 150 plus h minus 8.82 plus the square root of 1.65 times 150 minus 8.82 and I take that limit as h goes to 0. Notice I carry that limit notation all along because I have not yet evaluated the limit. I'm just performing the algebra to simplify first. I see that I've got a factor of h in both the numerator and the denominator. So that h divided by h is a form of 1. I can factor those out and I'm left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 1.65 divided by that denominator. And I'm going to carry that through to the top of the next screen. And at this point, I don't have to worry about a 0 divided by 0. I can evaluate that limit using the limit laws. And I get 1.65 divided by 2 times the square root of 1.65 times 150 minus 8.82, which is approximately 0 0.0534. At this point, we need to note that the derivative, or the instantaneous rate of change of time with respect to volume at 150 milliliters has units associated with it. Namely, it's the units of the function time divided by the units of the input volume. So the units associated with the derivative are seconds per milliliter. Let's consider the graphical perspective of the derivative 
of time with respect to volume when volume is 150 milliliters. So here we have a graph of our function, the square root of 1.65 times volume minus 8.82. And I want to note, first, what is the average rate of change of time with respect to volume on the closed interval from 150 to 150 plus h? And we recall that the average rate of change is the same as the slope of the secant line between the points 150 time evaluated at 150 and 150 plus h time evaluated at 150 plus h. Now here we've got a graph of the function and the secant line between those two points. If I zoom in a bit, I still see those same two points and the secant line. The secant line has a slope that's change in y divided by change in x. So t evaluated at 150 plus h minus t evaluated at 150 divided by 150 plus h minus 150. And we simplify that denominator a bit. And we see that that denominator, h, is the horizontal distance between those two points. The numerator is that change in time value, which is that vertical distance between those two points, or that vertical distance right here. So the slope of the secant line is the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance. As we zoom in further on the graph of the function on, this, on a small interval, so in this case, my interval is between 149 and 151, and we note that we could zoom in even further, but we're, we're making sure that we can, uh, we can see our point of emphasis, 150 milliliters. As we zoom in around the graph, on that small interval, we see that the graph looks like a line. And in fact, the line, the quote line that we see is the tangent line to the graph at v equals 150 milliliters. Now if we back out and we zoom out again, we see the graph of the function of time as a function of volume with the graph of the tangent line to the curve at volume equals 150 milliliters. If I zoom back in with those two things still graphed, the line tangent to the graph and the curve itself are indistinguishable. Now this highlights the concept of something we call local linearity. If a function is graphed on a very narrow window around a point of emphasis, in this case a f of a, if the graph of the function appears to be linear, then the derivative of the function with respect to the independent variable exists at that point. In other words, we can say that, that f prime of a exists. And the line that we see is the tangent line to the function at the point a f of a, and its slope is f prime of a, or the derivative of f evaluated at a. So returning to the example we had, the equation of the tangent line has slope t prime evaluated at 150, or the derivative of t with respect to v at 150, and it passes through the point 150, t evaluated at 150. And we can write the equation of the tangent line using point slope form. So I've got t minus my y value, t evaluated at 150, equals the slope t prime evaluated at 150 times v minus the x value, so v minus 150. So I make my substitutions for my slope and my y value, or my t value. Or we have the y-intercept form, t equals 0 0.0534 times volume plus 7.439. In summary, we define the derivative of function f with respect to x at a point x equals a to be f prime of a equals the limit of f evaluated a plus h minus f evaluated a divided by h as h goes to zero provided that limit exists. Now we can interpret the derivative of f at a point x equals a in multiple ways. First, as the slope of the graph of y equals f of x at x equals a, as the slope of the line tangent to the curve y equals f of x at x equals a, and the rate of change of f with respect to x at x equals a.